What is up guys, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we are going to finally add Firebase to our app. So we are on the 21st video right now. And in this video, we are going to add Google Firebase to our app. So on the course website, if you scroll down to further reading, you'll see Flutter Fire Docs. And this is what we're going to be using to add Firebase to our app. So the tab I am on now is the overview tab of the getting started section. So we're going to walk through the overview and we're going to look at the Android and iOS installation. So the first thing we need to do is we need to actually create a Firebase project. So if you do a quick search for Firebase, you'll be brought to the console and then we're gonna to want to hit add a project. So let's go ahead and enter a project name. I'm gonna call this Christmas List App. We'll hit continue. And I'm gonna go ahead and disable Google Analytics, but you can go ahead and keep that enabled if you would like. We'll hit create project and it'll take just a few seconds to spin this up. All right, there we go. We'll hit continue. And we are brought to the home screen of our project. So to begin the installation process, we're first going to need to add this package to our dependencies. Let's go ahead and open up our project. This is, as you recall, what we did last video. Go ahead and open up pubspec.yaml. And inside of the dependencies, go ahead and paste in the Firebase core. Now your number might be slightly different than mine, and that's okay. After you do that, you can run flutter pub get. If you're in VS Code, you don't need to do that. It will do it automatically for you. So next is the platform setup. So we need to actually configure Firebase for each of the platforms. So we'll have to configure it for Android first, and then for iOS. So before we can do all of this, we actually need to go through each of these separate tutorials. So let me open up both of these, and we'll start off with Android. So inside of our Firebase console, go ahead and create Android, and we need to create a package name. So for this, we're gonna write com dot, and then this is a name specific to you, so I'm just gonna use my name, and then dot, and then a name specific to your project. So Christmas list app, something like that. And that's all we need to do. We'll hit register app. Next, we need to download the config file, and we need to add that to the Android slash app directory. So we'll download that, grab it, and go into VS Code, and we need to go into the Android app and drop it right there. And then go ahead and click Next. Now we have to add some code. So the first thing that we're going to want to add is this line here inside of our build.gradle. So inside of here, Let's go ahead and open up, again in our Android folder, this build.gradle file. And right here in the dependencies, we can go ahead and paste that in. Now inside of another build.gradle file, notice this one is in the app level. We need to paste in this line. So for that, we're gonna open up the app folder and inside of this build.gradle. We'll come down here, and right above this Android, with these three plugins, go ahead and paste that line. And while we are in here, if you scroll down just a bit further to this default config, you'll notice a min SDK version. So if we try to run this on Android, we're actually going to get an error. And that's because this number here needs to be 21 or higher. And I found that out the hard way. It took me 
bit of time to figure that out. So just go ahead and change that and you won't get any errors. And these two steps here is exactly what this is telling you here. So that is all we need here. And if I scroll down a little bit, you'll notice this section enabling multi-decks. So if your app targets Android 21 or higher, we don't need to do this. And that's what we changed here. But if you want to keep this at 16 or lower than 21 for any reason, you're going to have to do this here. Other than that, this is good. So if you compile this and run on Android, it should work. Next, let's go ahead and install it for iOS. We'll just click next to go through this. So now we have one app for Android. We need to add another app. We'll add iOS. Again, we need an iOS bundle ID. We'll do the same thing. And again, leave these two optional settings blank. Okay, just like we did for Android, we need to download this file here. And we need to place this into our app. But we can't drag and drop like we did with the Android one. We actually need to open up Xcode and add it manually, like they're showing in this image here. So if you open up your app, the source code in Finder, and you go into the iOS folder, go ahead and double click on this runner.xc workspace. That will open up your app inside of Xcode. Go ahead and click on this runner here. And then like they show here, we need to right click on runner and hit add files to runner. So right click, add files to runner. Then we need to go ahead and select the item. So go ahead and find that. That would be in the download folder. Here we go, the Google services info.plist. We'll hit add. And make sure that the copy items if needed button is checked. Should be checked by default, but just make sure. And once you do that, we are all good. But the last thing I'm going to do is change this bundle identifier. I'm going to change the example to my name, just to make it unique. Perfect. Now with all of that, go ahead and make sure that's saved. And we can close that out. We'll hit next. We're going to skip this for now. We might have to run it later, but it will prompt us to do that. And we're going to hit next through this and continue to console. So now we have two apps, iOS and Android. And we are all good here too. So we'll close that out. So that was the platform setup for Android and iOS. Now we need to actually initialize Flutter Fire. So inside of our app, go ahead and close out all of the files, except for main.dart. Now the first thing we need to do is we need to import the Firebase core package. We'll say import package Firebase core slash Firebase core dot dart. Now what we're going to do is we're actually going to change our home screen. So we're not going to have it be the login and sign up page. We're going to set it to a stateless widget called home. So we'll say S, I'll tab on stateless, and this will be called home. Now we'll go ahead and change home to home. And make sure to remove this screen up top. We don't need the login and sign up screen anymore. Now, Right above the override, we need to create and initialize our Flutter future outside of the build. So we'll say final future Firebase app, and we'll call this initialization is equal to Firebase dot initialize app. And then we can return a scaffold. Inside of here, we'll set the body 
to a future builder. And in here we can initialize our flutter fire. So the future will be this initialization. The builder will be context, comma, snapshot. Inside of here, we need to first check for errors. We'll say if snapshot dot has error or has error. We'll just return a scaffold and we will set the body equal to a center widget with a child of text. And let's just go ahead and say error. If there's no error and the uh, snapshot is complete, so we are able to connect, we need to check that and then return that data to the user. So we'll say if snapshot.connection state is equal to connection state dot done, let's go ahead and return a scaffold with a body of center and a child of text success. Perfect. And eventually this will be set to our uh, home screen, whatever we want that to be. And then if neither of these are true, we must have, we must be loading. So let's just return center with a child text of loading. And this should be in a scaffold as well. Let's go ahead and refactor this and wrap it with a widget scaffold. And then this would be a body. Okay, perfect, there we go. So this should, if we've done everything correctly, when we run the app, we should see this success page. And that means we have successfully initialized fire, uh, Flutter Fire. Let's go ahead and open a simulator and run this app. All right, guys, and as you can see, we have a success page. So we were able to successfully connect our app to Firebase. And one thing I forgot to mention, with Android, you want to make sure that your application ID is changed to the same package name that you gave to Firebase when you were setting it up. So I'm gonna copy and paste the correct one into there. And now if I rerun this, it should work. All right guys, and there we go. It works on Android as well. So that is it for this video. And in the next video, we are going to take a look at authentication with Firebase.